welcome in our series on ritual spaces. So the next type of shape I want to discuss is the pentagram. The pentagram has five points, it's a five pointed star and as you can see you can you know, draw them with just one line. So it is in a way, you know, it has five points it's way an unbroken line which you can follow with your finger. And this is also the method in which to draw it best. So you can of course make different slashes. Um, but a lot of the power of the pentagram comes from being it from it being unbroken. The symbolism of the pentagram is a lot more complex than that of a mere circle. So what you have in a pentagram is you have the five points and the heart. And the heart of the pentagram, which is this pentagonal space in the center, this is really where uh, the ritual uh, takes place, where the ultimate transformation takes place. And these other five triangles they're, if you could say, a little bit the um, antechambers, the batteries, which are powering the ritual which is taking place in the heart. So, in a more typical sense, we would use the different uh, points to gather different energies. And the symbolism of the pentagram is also the symbol of the quintessence. So you have the, the elements with the lower elements of earth and water. Then you have the higher elements of the air and the fire. And ultimately also the quintessential element of spirit or life force. And it is the higher element, the top of the pentagram, which ultimately um, creates the mold, the instruction, which all the other elements follow or flow into. So the point of the pentagram, which is facing upward or containing the spirit influence, um, is often the most important one. Um, if you make mistakes in drawing or uh, putting symbols or objects in the other ones, it's a little bit problematic, but not really. If you make problems with the tip of the pentagram, things can go quite badly wrong. Um, so, in working with the pentagram, you need to be a lot more aware of what you're doing and what you're putting in the pentagram. Also the sources of power, which are generally placed in the triangles, they need to be more or less equal at the very least. So you want to combine four yeah, sources uh, and mold them into one thing with the instruction of the spirit. But the source of power also needs to be roughly uh, of equal quality and of uh, roughly the same vibration, otherwise it does not combine very well. If the elements are too far apart vibrationally or too different in quantity, um, then also the end result will not be very good. You can look upon it a little bit as a recipe. So the recipe is up here. What you should do, you should mix it, you should then put it in the oven, but the oven has to be at the right temperature and you have to use fresh milk and you have to use the right quantity of flour and the stirring or the uh, rising of the dough should be done for a certain amount of minutes or with a certain amount of yeast and if the ingredients are not good then even though the recipe might be correct in how you treat the ingredients, you will not get the correct result. 
So working with the pentagram is very similar in a way to, uh, to cooking a meal. And this is also why working with pentagrams is not just uh, a knowledge of how to do it or what to do. It is very much an art. You need to feel all the different energies, feel how well they connect, how well they harmonize with each other and uh, then try to work with it. Usually when I do a ritual with the pentagram um, I find that I've miscalculated or that things are still slightly off and you can compensate for that by in a way tuning the life force to use it slightly differently or adding or removing some energies or another way raising or lowering the vibration of all the corners. Um, but if you have a ritual damp pad, you shouldn't have to do that. It's also a matter of repetition. You get used to doing certain things in a certain way. And also other powers will yeah, join in. They will get used to you doing it in that way or using it for a specific purpose. So repetition is very valuable if you're working with a pentagram. Because the very process of transformation also tends to draw spirits in who are interested in processes of transformation who are interested in the alchemical process of in a way lower or inanimate elements becoming self-aware or conscious or more complex so there's very much a space of creation of creativity that you're creating so it is much more of a uh, place with a higher purpose, a higher goal than, for instance, a circle would be. You can combine the two, as is done here, where you have both the pentagram and the circle. And this makes it a lot easier to work with the pentagram, because the circle in itself acts as a harmonizer. So if you haven't done it completely correctly, with inviting the different elements or the different powers which go into the corners, then the circle will actually help to harmonize those minor differences uh, which exist. The pentagram is also often associated with uh, dark magic. It is not light or dark, it is just a working space, like an oven. And you can use an oven to bake a very nice cake and you can use an oven to, I don't know, uh, gas somebody by not lighting the fire and putting their head in the oven or, I don't know, torturing little animals by putting them alive in a hot oven. So, but the oven itself is just an instrument and it is what you do with it which makes it good or evil. What is a little bit typical is that in the most practitioners of the white magic will have the point pointing upward to create as a symbol that it is indeed the spirit which is controlling the lower elements or in a way also the lower elements which are rising up to the spirit. So it is very much a symbol of the power of the spirit and also the power of yeah, evolution and often when used in uh, dark magic rituals it will have two of the corners up and the point down and there its symbolism becomes very different and it is more of taking the powers of the elements and condensing them down into one point and that point can either be the a person receiving the energy so it can be if you're performing uh, an initiation ceremony or a healing ceremony that you want all the powers to focus on the person who will be placed in the bottom triangle. Uh, you can also use it to charge a potion or an object or a spell. So is it dark magic? Not by definition. 
but it is a very different process. It is not an evolutionary process where, where the energy is only listening to the spirit or conforming to the spirit. It is actually a process of condensing the energies downward, inward. So all these elemental energies have to go into usually a quite solid shape, either of a person receiving the healing or an object receiving uh, a blessing. Uh, but this blessing can of course also be a curse or a spell or some other initiation of an object where it becomes charged with the energy of the pentagram. So the reversed pentagram it's also often used as a protection symbol because in a way it is also taking, especially with the circle, because then the energies which come from the outside, they're first harmonized by the circle and then all the powers which are coming from the outside are also combined again and given to the person. So rather than that a curse or a negative energy would uh, yeah, harm you or inflict damage upon you. The reverse pentagram will actually harmonize the energies, focus these energies and turn them into your strength. So that instead of being weakened by your environment you become strengthened by your environment. And this is one of the most yeah, powerful uses of the uh, inverted uh, pentagram to use it for protection. It is not necessary to use the four elements, but it is often good to use at least different ingredients in the different uh, points. So uh, what I've also done in uh, working with the pentagram is for instance to burn candles on the point and then with every candle I devote it to a different power. So for instance if I want to get several spirits or several guides or several deities uh, involved in the process which I'm doing. This is also a way to invite them to cooperate with each other. Uh, in general I work with only one deity at a time but sometimes it is necessary to work with several deities or several powers. And the pentagram is a very good way by using the five points to, uh, to do that. So for instance if you are creating an object for a priest or a priestess or a high priest or a high priestess even, then often you would do it in this manner where you invite the different powers which that priest or priestess will work with and use the other one as um, either for the object or if you're performing an initiation to put the priest or the priestess there so that they can receive the blessing of the various gods and goddesses or other spirits which you're working with depending on the type of ritual you're performing. So it's a very versatile tool and I could probably talk on with that for another hour <laughs> about the many uses of the pentagram but I think this has given you some indication of uh, how useful a tool it can be but also that you need to be very careful to maintain a good balance but also know that the space the heart of the pentagram will respond to what is within it it is not just a blind program so the person in the center of the pentagram is also a very strong influence in how the recipe is carried out how the recipe is performed so the person in the heart is a little bit like the conductor creating the, the symphony. It is ideal if the conductor is also the one who is creating all the elements because then the control over all the elements uh, is the best. So you can ask other people to assist you of course but with circles I tend to do that Let's all build a circle together with pentagrams. I tend to prefer to work alone because if you build it, then it's also easier for you to control 
what will be the end result which is created in the energetic oven which is the pentagram.